So I'm logged into my Phrase account here and I have my Phrase product suite dashboard in front of me. So first of all I navigate into the orchestrator by clicking this button. I'm greeted with this interface. I already made a folder called walkthrough here which we will use to um, create our workflow so I can navigate into the folder and then click create workflow. I'll give my workflow a name and a description. So I quickly added this name and description. The workflow that I want to build here is going to be super simple. Whenever I create a new project, based on the project's domain, I want to add a different set of workflow steps to the project. So I can click Save, my project gets created, and I can click on it to start editing. Now, I start building my workflow by adding a trigger. Since I want to do something every time I create a new TMS project, I go into Triggers, I search for Project Created, and I can see here this trigger uh, project created in Phrase TMS, so I can drag this into my canvas to start building my workflow. The next thing I need is um, the Phrase Login action, so let me quickly search this here in, in Actions, and I can just drag this into my workflow canvas and dock it right under the trigger. So Phrase Login is uh, currently the way to authenticate any calls against the APIs. We'll see how it is used uh, in a few moments, but basically this is required every time to you want to do something that requires authentication. Now for the next step, I can just add my Add Workflow Steps actions. So I can once more go into the search here and search for Add Workflow Steps. So it's here. I can drag the action down here to add it. And what I want to do is I want to add workflow steps um, based on the project's domain. So what I will actually do is I'll drag another add workflow steps block into the canvas and I will drop it on top of this phrase login action. This is currently the way to create a parallel path. So if you drag an action on top of another other action and release the mouse button, it will uh, add it as a child of that action. So now I have this branching here and I can um, do different add workflow step actions depending on some conditions that we will define in a second. Okay, so now let's see uh, what we can do here. So the phrase login action, it does not need any configuration actually. If you look at its parameters, it does not have any because everything related to the login is done automatically in the background. But if I click on this add workflow steps action, I need to configure it. In order to do so, I can go here to parameters and click edit parameters, or I can just right click it on the canvas and then click on edit parameters. Now you see I have a few configuration properties here. So one important concept in Orchestrator is linking fields uh, to other blocks, so to speak. So this access token, for example, what I can do is I can click on this link button and link it to my phrase login action. And now in here I can access the properties of that action. And the way I do this is by adding double curlies to indicate that I'm now um, having a, dyna a dynamic uh, segment, so not just some static text, but this is going to be resolved at the runtime of the workflow. I can do a dollar sign, a dot, and then I can access the properties of this phrase login block. And if you want to know more about this, please refer to our documentation on this particular topic. Ultimately, the phrase login block returns a tokens, tokens object, um, and I want the TMS underscore token. So this will now insert a token to authenticate the workflow when it runs um, using the phrase login action. Similarly, here in the project UID action, I can reference my project created trigger, and from this I can access once again the properties and then the project UID. And then for the workflow steps that I want to add, we need the IDs here. So this is something that you can get uh, through the API quite easily. Um, and I prepared this, so I will just quickly add the ID of the workflow steps that I want to add here. So this is one ID, then I can click plus on the item here to add another ID. Let me also quickly fetch this. Here we go. Now this is configured correctly. And um, I can now also rename this action because what I'm doing here, if we look back at the parameters, I'm adding two workflow steps. So this is a translation workflow step and this is a revision workflow step. So what I will do here is I will call this add T and R workflow steps. And this name here, this is just for me so that I know 
uh, what I'm doing here. And now similarly for this other block, I want to add three workflow steps here. So same concept, I'm going to edit the parameters and I'll just fill this out quickly. And now I want to add three workflow steps, so the same two as before plus one more. So I'll also add those quickly. There we go. Now that I have my actions configured correctly, let's save this. Let's also rename this to add T for translation, R for revision, and CR for client review workflow steps. Okay, that's everything that we need for configuring the action. As a next step, let's actually add conditions to those blocks so we don't do both of them because at the current, the way it is currently configured, we would go into both of these branches. So let's now add some decision logic here. So to do that, I can once more right click the block and click on edit conditions or again in the sidebar, I can click on conditions and then edit the conditions here. And what I want to do here is I want to check if the project's domain is a certain value, so to speak. So I can link this field here and please note this will be uh, w wider, this field this is a bit of a visual glitch at the moment, but I can relate this variable field to the project created block once more and then what I will put in here is, and it's probably a bit hard to read, but uh, trust me, it's going to say project domain and then the name of the domain. We could also do this by domain ID, but I think it's quite nice to do it by the name and then I'll say here, so if this name of the domain is equal to marketing, then I want to go into this block. I can click save and I can see here, so if the project domain name is marketing, we want to add these two workflow steps. And similarly here, I can also edit the conditions. I can link this again to my project created and I can say here, product. So very, very simple workflow. Whenever I create a new project, I want to dynamically decide based on if the domain is product or marketing, if I want to add two workflow steps or these three workflow steps. By the way, if the domain is neither marketing nor product, the workflow will just stop here and not do anything. It's time to check out our workflow. So what we now do is once we're happy with the um, with the status that we have here, we can go directly to revisions. So we are currently on the first revision. This is the one that we are editing at the moment. And if I want to publish it, I can just come over here to actions and click publish. I can also rename my revision if I want to give it a name that is a bit more, um, bit more telling to me than just having it named revision one, I could do that. But for now, I will just publish the revision. I get this warning. So what's happening here is that the current state will be published and locked. And then any changes that we make further down the line will go into a new new revision. This way we can make sure that um, if there are any, any, any breaking changes at any point, you can always go back to a working revision. So let's publish this. And let's now hop into the product to see if it works as we expect in my TMS account and I will quickly create a new project which I will name my marketing translations and let me quickly set this up so I quickly added um, a source language and two target languages and I will gi now give this a domain of marketing and create the project here we go now, if I go back into the orchestrator and now look at executions here, and please ignore the two down here, I tried something out. Um, I can go into the executions and I can see that the workflow executed as I wanted it to do. Because I had the domain of marketing, so we added a T and an R workflow step. By the way, if you want, you can also inspect the inputs and outputs of the actions here. So we see that this has had this input here, for example. This particular action does not have an output, so it will just say null. But for actions that do, an out, do have an output, you would see it here. And now if we go back into my marketing project, actually, I need to refresh the page quickly. I can see that it has the two workflow steps that I wanted it to have. Let's now also have a look at some improvements that we can make to our workflow. The first one is um, something that I've already done here now. So if we just have a trigger like project created, the workflow will run every single time that event happens. So every single time a project is created here, for example. So what I have done now for this trigger is that I added a filter. You can see it up here. I can hover over it and we can already see what it says. So this workflow should only really 
um, become active if the project's domain name is equal to product or marketing. We can right click the trigger and then click on edit um, filters. So we get this interface here. So we can decide if we want an and or or condition. And in my case here, I want an or condition. We can define the path again as before. So the project, the, the domain, and then the name. And then we are saying that it should be equal to either product or marketing. And this, of course, makes a lot of sense because the decision that we're making down here in our workflow is based on this project domain name to be either of the two. So if it's not product or marketing, the workflow sh flow, uh, shouldn't even run in the first place. Okay, let's have another look at revisions. So we briefly touched upon this before. I actually added some more revisions in the meantime. Uh, revisions are great because they allow you to persist a certain state and in case any changes that you make further down the line uh, cause something to break, you can always go back to an earlier revision. So we can see here that I'm currently on revision 3, but I could also publish revision 2 again. Actually, I can quickly do this. This will um, unpublish revision 3 and revision 2, which is an earlier version, will go live. And we can also look at what is in every revision by clicking on it and then we get this um, view only mode basically. The other cool thing you can do here is that you can also export revisions to give them to somebody for example. So here my revision 2, if I'm happy with this, I can export this revision as a file and this will just download a JSON file that I can share with other people so they can import it into their orchestrator account and work with my workflow. Just while we're here, before we uh, have a closer look at importing files, you can also rename a revision. For example, if I want this revision to be named something else, like something that is more uh, clear to me, I can rename it to, I don't know, working state from March 6th, for example, right? And then it will have this name. Let's now have a look at what we can do with revision when it comes to creating a new workflow. So if I go back to my wor walkthrough folder here that I created, when I create a new workflow, I actually have this dialog where I can give it a name and a description. And I also have this file field here. And what I can do is I can actually quick, quickly click on it to open um, this dialog here where I can upload a file. And I prepared a strings workflow file that I can just select here and click open. It will read the name and description from the file and pre-populate it. I can also override this as if I want to. Uh, so I could add some characters here, but I don't need this. So I'll just create the workflow as it is. And as you can see, this imported the file with all of the workflow configuration. So it's technically still a new workflow. So we are on revision one of this new workflow, but I can now edit this, for example, here, uh, we have a filter on the uploads create trigger where it, at the moment it just says my project ID. So I could put something here like the correct project ID. But otherwise, this is a great way to share workflows with um, other users. Now to wrap things up, let's quickly have a look at the other views that you have inside of Orchestrator. So we had a look at workflows for now, but there's also a monitoring view over here that shows you all of your workflow executions with their given state. So you can click on a workflow name, for example, to quickly go to that particular workflow, or you can also click directly on any execution ID here to go into the execution and check out what's uh, going wrong with it, if something is going wrong with it. And then finally, we have a plan usage um, dashboard here. At the moment, this is relatively minimal, but it just shows you the consumed resources. So it shows you how many published workflows you have with your organization. So we for example, have eight out of 15 at the moment, and it shows you the executed actions for the given month. So since it's uh, relatively early in the month, we only have 200 out of our 100,000 allotted actions. Okay, so that's it for a very short walkthrough with an exemplary workflow and phrase orchestrator. If you want to learn more, stay tuned. We'll have more educational materials on, on the way.